Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. We are in Rice Lake, Wisconsin today, and we're at 419 Outdoors. We're talking with Greg Hayes. Greg, thanks for joining the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome to be here in your shop here tonight. This, it's closed. Yes. It's after hours, but the lights are all in, in here, and hopefully nobody stops and tries to pick up some minnows from us. We got the blades ourselves tonight. <laughs> well, we wanted to have you on today. Uh, it's getting... It feels weird. It's still nice outside. It's still warm outside. You guys are still doing the open water fishing, still enjoying that. But we're getting closer and closer to ice season. And I hate to tell you this, but we're like 60 days away from November. It's sneaking up on us. Yeah, it's tough to believe that, like you said, a couple months out when it's 87 and humid and, you know, you're, you're dreaming of still pulling the tube and hitting the beach. And, but uh, I'm excited for it. I, I know there's a lot of people that are excited for it. Uh, little little inside little inside deal is uh, I might like ice fishing a little bit more than open water. So yeah. so I'm super excited for this. Super excited. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that way. I mean, the cool thing about ice fishing, you don't need a boat. No, you know, you can walk out on the ice and do your thing. So for people who are just getting into ice fishing, I think this year we're going to see a lot of those people. So many people got back into fishing this summer. And now they're thinking about, hey, I enjoyed this. I'd like to get out on the ice. I don't need a boat. I can move around and do my thing. A absolutely. License sales are through the roof. Um, you know, it's this is this is a year you can't plan for. You know, you go into any of the, I mean, even our our walls, but you go into any of the big box stores, and uh, it's it's pretty bare. There's, there's people in the outdoors, and it, it's really good to see. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of families too. I think that that's been a really unique dynamic this year is uh, lots of kids, lots of kids. So yeah. they're not playing soccer, football, baseball, any of that stuff. They're fishing and enjoying the outdoors. So and that's one of the cool things about ice fishing too. That like my daughter hates to be stuck on a boat for three hours yeah. fishing. Yeah. But we can go ice fishing if she decides she wants to just run around for a half hour. She can do that. Like, there's nothing that's holding her to one spot. She can fish for a little bit and then run around and have fun if she wants to. Yeah, I, I've got three kids, and yeah, they can only they can only jig or watch a flag stuck on a tip up all day. And so, uh, yeah, it's cool. You know, making snowman. It's uh, that that that's that's where I really think that the my favoritism for ice fishing comes in is because of the the atmosphere of it. Sure, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. We wanted to have you on today though to talk about getting ready for the season. We're going to kind of gear this towards people who already have gear. Yep. But I think a lot of the things that we're going to talk about will apply to people who are just getting into the sport, too. We're going to talk about kind of some fine tuning. But uh, most of this, I think, will really probably pertain to a lot of people who are at least getting into their second year. They're pulling their gear out. What are some things that, you know, it's late August, early September. What are some things that they should be doing right now to prepare for ice season? So one thing that I really like to do before the temps start dropping, while we still got that that high noon sun that's warm and can dry stuff off, you know, is I like to pull my all my shacks out and I like to set them up. I do this I do this in the spring too, not as thorough as what I would do this time of year, but I like to take them out and I like to really scrub them up, really clean them, get the fish slime out of them, and uh, let those things air out and they dry really quick, so there's no residue, nothing like that. But that's probably the biggest thing that you can do this early in preparation is is getting your shacks ready i mean we you know it's, it's nothing to spend six seven eight hundred dollars on a sled shack nowadays and i tell you what that'll definitely extend the life of that tremendously yeah get them out there and a lot of times we store things rodents get into them yeah they could put holes in it. It, it at the very least you don't want to be popping that thing up in december and discover that there's holes or there's just a bunch of droppings in there get it cleaned up Check it out. See how everything is kind of stored over the summertime. Absolutely. How about electronics? So I like to. Uh, I, I'm I'm probably a little bit different, you know. Us, us, we've probably fish a little bit more than the average cat, but uh, I use my electronics year round. So I remove mine from my boat. They go in the ice pack, and away we go. Um, but prior to that, um, prior to you know using them year round, I used to take my batteries out because you never seem to charge it in the springtime. And so now it's set four, five, six months or whatever. And since it's had a charge last, I like to get them all, I like to charge them. But more importantly than charging it, I like to put a load test on it. I wanna make sure that that battery's not gonna fail when I go out. You know, There's still a lot of lead acid batteries out there that we're using for Vex, Large, Markham, stuff like that. Uh, now, 
the lithium battery is definitely coming on hot. You're starting to see more of that, but there's still a lot of still a lot of old timers out there that are using the lead acid batteries. And uh, I like to get a good charge in them and uh, put a load test on them, just to make sure. So the first time you go out there and click that flasher on, she's ready to rock. Yeah, even with the lithium batteries, good idea to get them out, make sure they'll take a charge, make sure that, that they're working the way they're supposed to. Um, another thing that just about everybody has that's doing ice fishing is an auger. Oh yeah. How about an auger auger prep for uh, for that season? Um, you know, if you prep it properly when you put it away, it makes uh, pulling it out in the end of summer and beginning of fall a lot easier. Uh, however, if you didn't dump the gas out from last year, probably want to start with that. And uh, it's probably not going to start. So you're probably going to want to look at, you know, a new spark plug, stuff like that. But uh, but I know a lot of people are really good about taking care of that stuff. And um, so, yeah, I mean, pull it out. I like to put fresh gas in it and I'll run through the same routine. I'll actually do this a couple times throughout the summer um, just because I'm a little more, you know, <laughs> a little more particular than the average Joe. But uh, I'll, I'll dump some fresh gas in it and I'll let fire the thing up in the driveway, let it rip for 10, 15 seconds, something like that. You know, run it through the paces a couple of times and then do the same procedure that I do in the springtime. Dump the gas out while it's running, choke it and make sure that I get all that gas out of it. And um, on the other hand, uh, stuff like a pistol bit. Those are pretty foolproof when it comes to maintenance, but uh, you know maybe check on your cordless drill. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure you had a couple of home improvement projects you used it for, but uh, but um, you know checking blades for sharpness. Uh, you know I would ha say that electric augers are really taking over the market, whether whether it's a pistol bit type setup or something like an ion. Um, that's just it's really taking over. They're bulletproof. They're uh, you know it's just something you snap a battery in and away you go no more mixing gas nothing like that no so pull and recoil yeah press the trigger and it goes exactly so uh I, I would probably refer back to the electronics aspect of it too plug that battery in make sure it takes a full full charge you know like um these are these do have a, a shelf life these batteries so if it's not charged up get it charged and do the same thing take it out run it through the paces a few times and it's pretty simple aside from that you no gas no oil no nothing so yeah, the other thing that I see and that I'm dealing with right now is I got totes of apparel. Yeah. You know, I got my suits and all that stuff, and I actually had to open up one of those totes the other day to, to pull something out of it that I needed for a sales meeting. And it, it, Are yours like mine? Do they smell like waxies and beef jerky? <laughs> <laughs> it smell so it's one of those things, too, that uh, go through that, that apparel, get yeah. everything ready, um, clean everything. You got anything else on that? Yeah, so I mean, every manufacturer is different. There's a lot of there's a lot of brands out there that that sell uh, float suits, if you want to call them. Uh, I run the Eskimo stuff, and I don't like to dry my stuff, and so I it goes back to the high noon sun. Uh, I can take that thing out, I can wash it, and I can hang that up outside, and I know that it's going to dry and it's not going to change shape it's not going to damage anything so I, I think that's a i think that's a great point get all them waxy and beef jerky suits out and <laughs> get them washed up for and ready for the season the other thing that I, that i find too is that i tend to at the end of the season have like four left-handed gloves mm -hmm. and the right-handed gloves are nowhere to be found so i think just take an inventory yeah. of what you have so you know if you hey i need a pair of gloves or something besides it never hurts to pull out the winter stuff because i'm pretty sure at least every year you find a 20 stashed in a pocket somewhere so <laughs> a 20 or, yeah. or or some some dried out wax <laughs> yeah yeah you never know it's it's like a little present once you start opening it up so those are out there and then i think probably another tool that that you see a lot is uh, guys are out there on their sleds they're out there in their quads um just go through all that stuff yeah um so speaking of sleds aside from snowmobile atv but uh the sleds that you pull behind them uh summertime is a great time to do maintenance on on anything like that something that you're gonna have to have hand tools out and do it instead of fighting when it's freezing cold out and plastic doesn't like to bend or anything like that get new runner kits put on your on your tow behinds right away put that hitch on that you wanted uh you know just stuff like that it, it's really it's much more comfortable to sit in the garage with the garage door open and a bush latte sitting on a sitting on the nightstand uh and doing that stuff then then wait until it's cold but but back to snowmobiles and atvs um a lot here in northwest wisconsin 
we use those things pretty year round aside from the snowmobile. But, uh, you know, check your carbides, check your old oils. Some people don't put a whole lot of miles on a sled and a gallon of oil lasts them four or five years. Check on that stuff. I mean, it's, it's a great, it's a great time just to take that once over when the weather's nice, when you're comfortable and when the stuff is, is in your head, there's so many times that you put stuff away and then three, four months down the road, you go, oh heck, you know, I, I totally forgot about this. And, and I, I like to take, I, I have a journal that I keep every once in a while and just like notes, I just keep stuff in there. And uh, I'll refer back to that. I'll write that stuff in there. Um, even if it's a place I've been, I just kind of write a little bit of everything in it. So uh, I, I do that to help myself out. But yeah, there's just, it's it's really endless. Sure. <laughs> Rod and reel prep. Rod and reel prep. So I take all my reels apart. Uh, I probably could be better about this and maybe do a little bit, a few more times throughout the year. But I really focus on this time of year prepping those rods. Um, once the open water rods really start to get put in, put away, which is going to be in a couple of weeks here, uh, I start pulling out the old stuff. I, I like to put fresh line on the stuff right away. Uh, I just like to, if I don't do it all at one time and I break that stuff up, I find that y you miss it. You miss a, you miss to put line on a, you know, on a rod or something or on a reel. So um, I also take all the rods out. I use Fox River rods. I like to stress test them all. They've been sitting in a rod locker. They've been thrown in a you know sled shacks they've been strapped on the rack of the four-wheeler whatever the case may be and uh i go through and i stress test everything and just you know kind of wipe everything down to it you're kind of amazed at all the mouse turds and cobwebs that <laughs> sure and, and everybody's got jig boxes and lure boxes it's a great time to kind of go through those as well yep so in the springtime i like to take and throw uh, a lot of people know the company flambo and they, uh, <clears throat> they have their Z-Rust technology. Well, I have a bunch of the bins and I like to throw those Z-Rust tablets in there just to help from, you know, or using a flambeau box. If, but um, this time of year, I like to take those tablets out and I throw fresh tablets in. I don't know if it helps or not, but to me, you know, it, it seems like it does help. Uh, I also like to keep all my plastic separated. Uh, they kind of get into a big ball of you know what one one little mite turns into a big ball of mites so uh it's, it's a really good time to go through that stuff um and there's a there's a little bit of you know memory that kind of comes back once you start pulling that stuff out and you see that color that oh yeah i remember when i headed to lake of the woods last year we really crushed them on that and so again i pull out the notepad and i start making notes of stuff that uh you know i need to start focusing on because come January, mid-January of last year, I couldn't find those anymore. Right. So I like to get in and get on that stuff right away. Yeah, I wanted to get into that with you. We're, we're sitting here in your store, yep. and you said that you know a lot of things are gone. Mm -hmm. And I think this year, with even more people that are gonna start venturing out of the ice, it's gonna be important this year to go through those jig boxes and find those those hot colors and the, and the hot jigs that you really liked. And you're gonna wanna stock up on those early because a absolutely. The other thing is the whole the whole deal with China. You know, if these things are produced in China, what we have here is probably what we're going to have. So when they're out, they're yeah. Out. So so one thing that's it's probably I mean tungsten all the way across the board in the fishing industry is taking over, uh, com taking over lead uh, dramatically. So all tungsten is manufactured overseas. So if you have a favorite tungsten jig or anything with tungsten in it, snatch that sucker up quick because like you said there's and and it's not just when they're out they're out it's just everything with china is is different now it's your ship times went from three months to six months now so that's that's why you see a lot of these empty places that the, the demand is much higher than what than what the market is able or you know our shops are able to keep up with right now through distributors and stuff like that now i do have to say one thing um Going into the spring, we all kind of got our butts kicked. Even the big box stores, you walk in and there's nothing. So um, they've done a really, really good job at um, trying, try, trying to really focus on making sure this doesn't happen again. So orders, if they ordered 100 of them uh, for the spring, they're now ordering 150, 200, whatever that number is. But uh, I know myself, I'm not going to risk it. So right. so definitely, definitely tungsten stuff you guys are going to want to check out. And a lot of this stuff in the industry as a whole is manufactured overseas. So you, you hit the nail on the head. Grab yeah. it while you can. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of retailers and 
and many of them are expecting a bigger year. They're mm-hmm. ordering more than what yes. they usually do, but they also have a goal that they want to. They don't want to have leftover inventory. Correct. So when that stuff does run out, you know, if all the the baby bass runs out, yep. and you come in wanting baby bass, they're going to sell you chartreuse because that's yep. what they got. Yeah, so exactly. If you have a, that special color mm-hmm. that you love. Get it early. Yeah, and, and another thing too, I don't know what the heck it was with fishing line this year, but that was probably one of one of the hardest things to get for several months. So uh, it's gonna be the same way with ice line. Get in, get that line early. You're gonna start seeing product on our sh- on our shelves here in September. So we've got stuff ordered. We're trying to stay ahead of the game. We know that a lot of people out there are thinking ice. So we're gonna have ice line here. And it's just a great way to sit on the porch at night, enjoy the sunset. Again, maybe another bush latte and uh and spool up spool up them reels yeah and speaking of just projects to do mm-hmm. we talked about those jig boxes and the special colors there that we want but i think a really cool thing to do right now is to figure out where you want to put stuff mm-hmm. figure out where you want to put stuff on your quad or on your snowmobile or in your truck yep or and then the other thing is is like all of these suits we're buying they've got all these pockets in them and they're designed to save anglers time so yes. that we're not looking all over for our jig box. So now's the time to figure out that, hey, I'd like to have my jig box in my left chest pocket. Yep. I like to have my pliers down on my right on my right leg. Mm-hmm. Like this is the time to start figuring those things out. Because when you get out there and you're on your favorite body of water and those crappies are below you, you need to make sure your lines are in the water as much as you can. You're not fumbling around looking for your box. You're not fumbling around looking for your pliers. So there are other things that you can think of there, like those fine tuning type of things that we can work on right now. Um, yeah, I do, I do think so. Um, for me, something that I always struggle with is organization, uh, organization inside the shack. So I usually get out there and the stuff is kind of organized from when I put it in there. But definitely at the end of the year, I might go through all my boxes and do all my maintenance, my rod bag, all that stuff. But it just all kind of gets thrown in the bottom of the sled. Um, I like to go through all that stuff. I like to put the you know my scissors and clipper holders back in place. And uh, I like to check out, I put lights inside my shacks. I like to check all the wiring. It's, it's minute details probably, but uh, I think that organization is key. So when the time is ready, all I gotta do is grab onto that thing and throw out the door. We were talking before we went on the air here about uh, wheelhouses. Oh, yeah. Now, more and more people are going to be going to them. They're going to become even more popular. So you've got some prep to do with wheelhouses as well, uh, making sure like your fire extinguisher is up to date, yep. those types of things. What are some other things when it comes to wheelhouses that people should be getting ready as, as the season kind of approaches? Probably the biggest two, well, two things is going to be lights and bearings and brakes if you got them on your trailer. But those are those seem to be the most neglected thing ever. You know, even during the middle of the season, nobody wants to lay underneath a, you know, underneath an ice castle that's got six inches of frozen slush underneath it and try and chase down some wires to fix a tail light. So do that stuff now, hook it up to the truck, drag it around the block, get that grease warm, check it all out. If you got oil bath hubs, check them out that way. Put some fresh grease into it, pull the tire off. Like t- that's another thing, tire pressure. Now is a great time to do it instead of on the side of the road on your family fishing trip headed to Mille Lacs when it's 20 below and a tire goes bad. So so I, I'm gonna say may, maybe uh, at least my side of it, the more mechanical aspects of, of the wheelhouse. I think uh, everybody loves to put that, you know, fancy rod holder with the picture of a walleye engraved into it or something like that. But, uh, but really, uh, you know, look at the mechanics of it and make sure they, and they're not cheap. Yeah. They're not cheap, so so protect your investment. Awesome. Greg, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you wanted to talk about today? Um, you know, maybe uh touch on the subject uh late season ice or late season open water fishing can be some of the best of the year. And I know a lot of people are fair weather fishermen, but you already if you ice fish, you already have most of the equipment out there. Jigging wraps, ice suits, all that stuff. When it's 40 degrees out or below, you know, even in the mid thirties in the morning and you're out there, those uh, those ice suits are like your best friend. There, right. There's no hoodie out there. There's no nothing. I mean, those things were designed to really take care of you in cold temperatures. And it's a great time to start pulling planer boards for walleyes. And I know every single year, that's what I'm wearing is I got the keeper suit on and doing that, so. So as you're getting ready to do some ice fishing, don't forget 
don't neglect that open water fishing. It's still good out there. So yeah. Greg Hayes from 419 Outdoors. People want to get a hold of you, know more about your shop and what you do. How do they find you? Uh, easiest way is follow us on Facebook. We're pretty active on there. You'll see my ugly mug on there doing shop walks and all kinds of crazy stuff on the lake, whatever. Um, we're located on the north end of town in Race Lake here, right across from the fairgrounds. Uh, you can uh, either stop on in 1007 Hammond Ave, and that's in Rice Lake, or give us a call 715-475-1211. We, uh, everybody that sits behind this counter in this shop is a fisherman, or my mom, she's a fisherwoman. So when you come in here, you're going you're gonna to get just more than just somebody who's going to check out the register. We're going to be out there. I encourage all the guys to use the stuff that we bring in. So everything in this store that we have, we use. So it's a little bit of a un unique dynamic, but we love it and we love interacting with our customers. So Awesome. Greg Hayes from 419 Outdoors. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks Thank for you. watching. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time.